what interrupts me, right? So interrupt is very important aspect for me because we have a flood of information out there. Um, but then what stops me from scrolling and browsing other things? So it has to be unique, different enough that that interrupts me first, right? So I think for me, that's very important. And then next step, again, this is universal for all marketing philosophy to me. And then it has to, after, after I get interrupted, it has to be attractive enough, the message, the core message. Because we, you know, most doctors are moving fast, right? And then a, a lot of doctors, they, they don't even want to show badges because they almost, they feel like they get hassled. So how can we make it reverse? I'm not hassling them, but hey, I got interrupted because it, it's unique enough. And then that when I listen to message for first text, 10 seconds, is it for them? So that message should be, what's in it for these doctors? And if that's not attractive enough and um, beneficial enough to these doctors, they're not gonna stop. They're just gonna keep going, okay, I'll come back later. And then they go. So for me, and I look at these, observe this very carefully, um, because again, I have a very interesting perspective. How do they do marketing? You know, like for example, I go to a restaurant, I don't just enjoy the food, but I look at other things, the turnover rate, um, what kind of messages they're putting in the menu, how, uh, how waitress, you know, they, or waiters, they, they um, you know, deliver the message of their, their food or, or whatever, the whole experience of restaurant dining. So same thing for me, anywhere I go, I look at how they deliver the message and how it is unique enough. So I think exhibitor, for me, if they do at least first two steps, they're going to bring enough attention from doctors. I'm more of a window shopper, but there is usually two or three key people or key companies that I've you know, that I know ahead of time that I'm going to want to make a point of seeing. But overall, yes, I think I do sort of walk around it because there are companies I don't know about or products I don't know about or procedures I don't know about. And, and an exhibit hall is one way for a DPM to learn about those things where they might not have otherwise. Any type of hands-on capabilities is always going to be engaging for me. People that have saw bones and actual visual aids for their surgical trays or their wound care product that's always going to be more engaging than someone that does not have those things um and i personally prefer when they're not super pushy because if they if i know they're trying to sell me right off the bat i kind of just walk away because i that doesn't make me super comfortable but if somebody just wants to share what their product is, what it does, why it might be helpful in the foot and ankle environment, then I'm usually all ears for that. The vendor has to match the, I mean, not always, but I think it's best if the vendor matches the um, the topic of the lectures. Like, I bought a dermatoscope at Dermfoot, you know, smart placement. You know, a dermoscopy at ACFAS probably wouldn't do so well. You know, and then there's the, the sort of general stuff, like Region 3, um, and then there's this even more local things like in New Jersey, we do uh, battlegrounds. So, you know, very specific local things like if you want an, a lab that's local or a marketing person, if you want to be down the street from your marketing person, if you want your marketing person to be in your state, you know, you know, it's nice to know what's what's local or you, you can meet a lawyer or you can meet a, um, you know, your pathology lab, whatever it is, um, talking to them there, you know, some things are better for you know, a bigger, more surgical, and some things are better for a smaller, more local, and depends sort of uh, what your product is. And advertise, it's nice to know that they're going, and we do get sometimes emails and, or letters or um, a postcard saying, I'm gonna be at ACFAS, I'm gonna be at Region 3, I'm gonna be at Dermfoot, you know, so we know to look out for them, and we know, oh, we're gonna have sales, or we're gonna have, you know, discounted topical or orthotics or whatever it is. It's nice to know that it's gonna be there. Um, I would, I guess the one thing I would say is just from a mathematical standpoint, it makes sense for the companies to come to conferences. And if they have a problem with trade shows, I mean, you're, you're getting a large number of your market in a room stuck for hours. I mean, how much better are you going to get? I mean, 
I visit the exhibit hall, but I usually don't just wander it. Um, I do that a little bit for you know maybe the first day, and then I start focusing really on uh, on getting more information from companies that maybe I don't know too much about, um, as opposed to ones that I use quite a lot. Like there are a few surgical companies or maybe some wound care companies that I'll uh, that I'm already using a lot. And I don't need them to tell me about the same product I've been using for years. On the other hand, there are oftentimes new companies and services that look really interesting that I'd like to learn more about. Um, so I start to target it uh, as I as I go through because you know, there's only so much time you have at the conference to to you know see every exhibitor. I think there are a few maybe a few things that I could think of. Um, one of them is just. I mean, and honestly, I don't love it, but just how aggressive the the rep is. Um, many of them will just either sit there, or they'll sit there and stare at you walking by, or they'll have like like, or they'll just wait for for me to initiate. And the ones that tend to be more aggressive, and actually like like as I'm wandering through, they'll actually like say something, catch my attention. Uh, usually that ends up with me starting to gravitate towards the, the booth. Um, once I'm there, if the product is either something I already know really well, um, or it just looks like BS, then, then I'm going to skip it. I mean, there are a few things that I've seen. I, I, I don't want to name any because God knows you could eventually have a sponsor like that and then I'll kill it for you. But, um, you know, you, you can have some of these that are like, they're clearly like some homeopathic nonsense that that is never going to accomplish any any medical treatment on a person. And that that one I like, I'll just skip. Um, like I really try to so like I'll walk by a person even trying to talk to me in cases like that. But in order, often there's usually like there's a, a, a picture or something that's going to show the, the the main aspect of the product, and that's probably the thing I see in those first couple of seconds. All right, that looks kind of interesting. Let's let's talk about it a little bit more. And usually, once the once the rep is actually speaking to you and they're talking about you know, their, their, their data or, you know, what evidence they have for why their product is really good. They're usually, um, they're usually pretty convincing. Once I'm, I feel like once I'm engaged, they've got me 50%. And then, and then the rest of it is really going to be about the product. And if their product stinks, then nothing they can say is going to make me use it. Um, what I can say about the pre-marketing part of things is I, Maybe, I, I don't know if I'm an outlier or common, but I hate them. I just, I, I get it in the mail, it's attached to, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, Podiatry Today, they got like a big ad on top of it, or, you know, they've got whatever the conference is coming up. Um, I usually just rip it off and then look in the magazine. Uh, and then when I get emails from people, I, I get like 200 emails a day. It's getting deleted if I even open it. And it, it, it's the, whatever the email is, it has to be something amazing for me to even want to look at.